Hello, Orange Dream friends. It's Anne. So let's sing our hello song. One, two, three. Hello, 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 and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Hola, 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 y como estas? Muy bien. Muy bien, y espero que tú también. Okay, let's look at our May calendar. It's starting to fill up. So last time I saw you was way back here on Wednesday, May 13. And then you may have seen Michelle on a video on Thursday, May 14. And then we had our weekend. So we had May 15, 16, and 17. That was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And now we're right here. So if last time was 1, 7, 17, what would it be now? Should we count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Were you going to say 18? I think that's what it's going to be. And then let's see our pattern. Yesterday was a flower. Hmm, if you look at our pattern, can you see what it will probably be today? Should we go through the pattern just to make sure? Flower, flower, chick, chick, chick. Flower, flower, chick, chick, chick. Flower, flower, chick, chick, chick. Flower, flower, chick. So let's see if we're right. So we've got 18, which is 1 eighth, and we have a chick. Okay, and I'm going to put this in this spot right here, which is under this day of the week, which starts with an M and it comes after Sunday. Let's see what that is. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So today is Monday with an M. So let's put that up here too. There we go. Okay. So now, I was thinking I'd like to go ahead and read our book. This is a book from Kevin Henkes, and it's one of my favorites. He's one of my favorite authors, and this is called Chester's Way. These are some big pictures. Chester had his own way of doing things. Hello, my name is Chester. I like croquet and peanut butter and making my bed. He, he always cut his sandwiches diagonally. See, he made two triangles. He always got out of bed on the same side. And he never left the house without double knotting his shoes. Chester always had the same thing for breakfast, toast with jam and peanut butter. And he always carried a miniature first aid kit in his back pocket, just in case. You defi definitely have a mind of your own, said Chester's mother. That's one way to put it, said Chester's father. Chester's best friend, Wilson, was exactly the same way. That's why they were best friends. Chester wouldn't play baseball unless Wilson played, and they never swung at the first pitch or slid head first. Wilson wouldn't ride his bike unless Chester wanted to, and they always used hand signals. If Chester was hungry, Wilson was too but they rarely ate between meals. 
Some days I can't tell those two apart, said Wilson's mother. Me either, said Wilson's father. Chester and Wilson, Wilson and Chester. That's the way it was. They loved to go on picnics. Once when Wilson accidentally swallowed a watermelon seed and cried because he was afraid that a watermelon plant would grow inside him, Chester swallowed one too. Don't worry, said Chester. Now if you grow a watermelon plant, I'll grow one too. Chester duplicated his Christmas list every year and gave a copy to Wilson because they always wanted the same things anyway. For Halloween, they always dressed as things that went together. Salt and pepper shakers, two mittens on a string, and ham and eggs. They really are two peas in a pod, said Chester's mother. Looks like it, said Chester's father. In spring, Chester and Wilson shared the same umbrella. In winter, they never threw snowballs at each other. In fall, they raked leaves together. And in summer, they reminded each other to wear sunscreen so they wouldn't burn. Chester and Wilson, Wilson and Chester, that's the way it was. And then Lily moved to the neighborhood. Lily had her own way of doing things. I'm Lily. I am the queen. I like everything. She wore band-aids all over her arms and legs to look brave. She talked backwards to herself sometimes so no one would know what she was saying. I'm a illil, which is backwards for Lily am I. And he never left the house without one of her nifty disguises. Lily waved at all the cars that passed by, even if she didn't know who was in them. And she always carried a loaded squirt gun in her back pocket, just in case. She definitely had a mind of her own, said Chester. That's one way to put it, said Wilson. When Lily asked Chester and Wilson to play, they said they were too busy. When she called them up on the phone, they disguised their verse voices and said they weren't home. That's not very nice, is it? If Will Lily was walking on one side of the street, Chester and Wilson crossed to the other and hid. She's, she's something else, said Chester. Looks like it, said Wilson. One day, while Chester and Wilson were practicing their hand signals, some older boys rode by by popping wheelies. They circled Chester and Wilson and yelled personal remarks. Chester and Wilson didn't know what to do. Just when they were about to give up hope, a fierce looking cat with horrible fangs jumped out of the bushes and frightened the older boys away. Do you think that's Lily in one of her disguises? Are you who I think you are, Chester asked the cat. Of course, the cat replied. Thank you, Lily, said Chester. You're welcome, said Chester. You're welcome, Chester, said Lily. Thank you, Lily, said Wilson. You're welcome, Wilson, said Lily. I'm glad you were wearing a disguise, said Chester, and I'm glad you had your squirt gun, said Wilson. I always do, said Lily, just in case. Afterward, Chester invited Lily over for lunch. You have a muscle mouse cup, said Lily. Of course, said Chester. I do too, said Lily. Same here, said Wilson. Chester and Wilson cut their sandwiches diagonally. Lily asked Chester's mother if she, could, if she had cookie cutters 
and she made stars and flowers and bells. That's neat, said Chester. Wow, said Wilson. That night, Lily invited Chester and Wilson to sleep over. You have a nightlight, said Chester. Of course, said Lily. I do too, said Chester. Same here, said Wilson. Chester and Wilson wanted toast with jam and peanut butter for breakfast the next morning. Boring, said Lily. Try this instead. This is good, said Chester. Wow, said Wilson. Ooh, it looks like it's toast with maybe some berries for eyes and an orange section for a nose and maybe those are Cheerios and some more sections for the ears. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That Lily's got some good ideas. After that, when Lily asked Chester and Wilson to play, they said yes. And when she called them on the phone, they had pleasant conversations. And if Lily was walking on one side of the street, Chester and Wilson waved and ran to catch up with her. Chester and Wilson taught Lily hand signals and she taught them how to pop wheelies. Lily taught Chester and Wilson how to talk backwards and they taught her how to double knot her shoes. Cool, they're sharing our ideas and teaching each other. Some days I can't tell those three apart, said Lily's mother. Me either, said Lily's father. Chester and Wilson and Lily. Lily and Wilson and Chester. That's the way it was. For Halloween, they dressed as the three blind mice. For Christmas, Lily gave Chester and Wilson nifty disguises and they gave her a box of multicolored shoelaces extra long for double knotting. They loved to go on picnics. When Chester and Wilson told Lily about how they had each swallowed a watermelon seed once, Lily swallowed three of them. I'll grow a watermelon plant for each of us, she said. In spring, Chester and Wilson and Lily shared the same umbrella. In winter, they never threw snowballs at each other. In fall, they raked leaves together. And in summer, they reminded each other to wear sunscreen so they wouldn't burn. Chester and Wilson and Lily, Lily and Wilson and Chester. That's the way it was. And then Victor moved to the neighborhood. Oh, looks like they're going to need to make a new friend, Victor, huh? And I bet Victor has some new fun ideas and they can share some of their cool ideas with Victor. That's what's really great about making new friends and still keeping your old friends, right? So there's a song that I was thinking of because we haven't been able to see each other in the orange room and you haven't been able to see your orange room friends and that's really hard, but we're all still friends, right? And we're gonna be friends, we're gonna stay friends. But soon the school year's gonna end and some of you were gonna go to a different class and some of you will go to a new school and some of you will go to kindergarten. So you'll make new friends too. But your old orange room friends will still be your friends, right? So this song is called Make New Friends. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other's gold. A ring is round, it has no end. That's how long I want to be your friend. So I really wish I could see you all in person, but I'm glad that we can at least have this time together on these videos. And I hope you're singing along on your end. We'll sing that. I think Michelle's going to also sing that song because we'll sing that the next few clad, few videos, okay? So now... I have to pause it for a minute because I have to go outside. We have to release our butterflies. So I'm going to do that outside. And then I also have kind of a fun project I'm going to do outside because it involves water. So I'll see you in just a little bit, okay? Hi, guys. I'm back 
in my backyard on my patio and I brought our butterfly net out so that we can release our butterflies. They're ready to go fly around and enjoy the spring weather. So let's see if I can get them. Now when I, oh, when I let them out, they might fly away really fast, so you might not get a chance to see them all that closely, but I'm going to see if one might rest on my finger very gently. Here. Okay. Here's one. Look. Can you see? Whoop. Bye-bye, butterfly. Okay. Let's get another one. Come here, you. Come here. Oops. Gentle. I have to be very gentle. I don't want to accidentally hurt their wing. Okay, there's another one. Whoops, come on back up. Oh, this one doesn't know what to think. He's going to get his bearings. I think. Let me get another one. Oh, I hope you'll be able to see this. Come here, they're so excited they don't know what to do. Come here, you. Come on. Ready? No, Winnie, careful, Win. These are not for you. Do you see it? I'm going to set this one down, see if he starts to fly. He's so excited, he doesn't quite know what to do, I think. And here's another one. Let's see. Here, do you see it? This one doesn't have his o wings open yet. Can you see that? Oh, there you go. There you go. There. So I'm going to set him here and get him get his... They might be just a little bit not quite sure where they are. So it's going to take him a little while to get ready to fly. There he goes. That one flew off. Come here, little guy. Let's move this one over there. He's starting to get his wings ready. He's starting to get ready to fly. Here, I'm going to set him over here on the table over here and see if he'll fly away. I think he's getting ready. Okay, so how many? Oh, we got one more up on the top. Here, maybe I'll open it up from up there. Let's see here. All right, here we go. Last one. Bye, little. Oh, there he is. He's down there, but he'll probably fly away in a second. Yep. Okay. So our butterflies are free. I'll look around in the yard and see if I see them on any flowers trying to get some nectar. But... Now what I want to do, since we're out here, outside, I thought it might be fun to do something with water. So I've got this tub of water. Can you see this? It's a, it's a big salad bowl that I filled with water. Let me move it back a little so you can see. There you go. And I'm going to do a sink and float experiment. So I've got some different objects. I've got a plastic spoon and a metal spoon. The metal spoon feels heavier. The plastic spoon feels light. Do you think these will sink or float? Think about what you think the answer is, and now we'll see what happens. So I'm going to first put the metal one in. That one just plopped right to the bottom. Now I'm going to put the plastic one. <gasps> it's floating. So I've got a little chart here, and I'm going to put metal spoon, sink, sunk, and plastic spoon floated. So I've got this little chart that I'm going to keep. Okay, let's see. What else should we do? I've got a cork and I have a penny. 
Let's see which one of these. What? Think in your head what you think. Do you think these are going to sink or float? Let's take a look. Oh, can you see that? The cork is floating on top. Can you see? Now let's see what happens to the penny. Plunk. Oh no, the penny is sitting on the bottom. Let's see if you can see that. I don't know if you... Well, we'll just have to do the best we can. Okay. Now, I'm going to put penny sunk and cork floated. Okay, now I've got a wooden craft stick and I have a plastic Duplo. What do you think? Let's put the craft stick on. Oh, it's floating on top. It's floating like the plastic spoon and cork did. Now what about the Duplo? Let's see. The Duplo's floating too. Okay, what about this heavy key? This is a metal key. It's kind of, it's kind of heavy. Let's see what happens with that. Oh, that plopped to the bottom. What about this crayon? I have a green crayon here. Oh, that sunk. What about a wooden toothpick? Oh, that floats. Okay, so I'll mark on here that our craft stick floated, our key sunk, our Duplo floated, our toothpick floated. Okay, now I've got a, pap a metal paper clip and a sponge. Let's see what happens. Oh, the metal paper clip dropped right to the ground. Even though it, was, it felt light, but it dropped, it flo sunk. Oh, the sponge is floating. Can you see that? So, the sponge floated and the toothpick no, I've already got the toothpick. The paper clip sunk. Okay. That was Winnie and my husband John was telling Winnie to stop barking, if you heard that. Okay, now I've got something interesting. I've got two shapes made of the same thing, aluminum foil. This one I made into a ball, and I tried to squeeze it as tight as I could. And this one I made into kind of a little canoe shape, a little boat shape. So what do you think is going to happen with these? Most of our metal things, which this is kind of made of metal, sunk. Our key and our paper clip and our spoon and our penny. Let's see if this one sinks. Oh, it floated. Now let's see if the boat sinks. <gasps> the boat floated too. So I don't know if any metal... Um, maybe because the aluminum foil is lighter, it floats. Hmm. I wonder what would happen if I put the penny and the key in the boat. <gasps> it's still floating. Cool. So, that's just a fun thing to try and think about. What kind of things are floating and what kind of things are sinking? Most of our metal stuff sunk, although our aluminum, which maybe is a little bit of a lighter, aluminum foil is lighter than most metal things. Maybe that has something to do with it. I thought the shape of the boat might make a difference, but both are, in this case, both our aluminum foil ball and our boat floated. But I noticed... Like wood things like the craft stick and the toothpick floated. Um, and our sponge floated. And our lighter plastic spoon and our plastic Duplo floated. So this all has to do with what the material the 
um, object is made of. And there's these little particles called molecules, and it's it's how the material is made. If the mar if the if the molecules are super close together, all squished together, it's a denser material, and it doesn't float. It's more likely to sink. And if it's something where the molecules have a little more room to spread out, they float. But it also has to do with the shape of things because you can have a big giant ship that floats. And that also has to do with on the ship, how much, how much air, how many spaces are filled with air because air is less dense than water. So like this plastic bottle is full of air, so that would also help it to float. So let me put that on top and see what happens. Yep, it's just sitting right on top. See that? Can you see that that's sitting right on top? So it has to do with how close together the molecules are, how dense they are, and then there's also, the shape also can make a difference. So it's fun to try different experiments, and maybe on a warm spring day, you can do it outside with a, tub of water or a kiddie pool with some water. Maybe you could put your rock some bath toys in and see what happens with those. Or you could do this experiment in the bathtub or maybe in a sink. So try it. It might be fun to try at home. And, and I've kept sort of a list of what things were sunk and what floated. So you could try that too and, and keep track and experiment a little with the shape and see what happens. So anyway, I hope you have fun with that and I'll see you next time. And meanwhile, I'll go keep an eye out for the butterflies, see if they're flying around my backyard. So bye-bye, Orange Room friends.